In this presentation, we're going to look at how to derive the, ex the expectation, the mean, and the variance of the negative binomial distribution. Now, just to be clear, I might break this up into two videos, seeing as how I'm going for time. So A will be the mean and B will be the variance. Now, the probability mass function of a negative binomial around a variable distributed as R, where R is the number of successes, and P is the number of the probability of a success, we do, did note it as follows. Now, so N is the number of trials, okay, that we need to achieve R successes. And X plus R is the number of trials altogether, where R is the number of successes and X is failures. So that's just an important little thing to consider in this case. X is the number of failures that we get before R successes. That's just actually the trick, the tricky thing about the negative binomial distribution actually. Just actually, there's about four or five, three or four actually, ways of actually sort of considering it or sort of uh, seeing what sort of question it asks, okay? And that is, so it's sort of, they're all very similar to each other, but that's actually what we have to sort of look at in this case here. So in some other videos, I actually might sort of like uh, look at it in a slightly different way. So just be careful about how I set up each negative binomial uh, distribution in each video. I was sort of very quick in one of them, but uh, as you go through it, you realize that it, it's a bit more complicated. Anyway, so anyway, that's just our starting point. We don't really need to dwell on that anymore. We're going to sort of develop our, our expect, uh, calculate the expected value of x based on this probability mass function. Okay. Now, just as a quick remark, this is always handy when you do with these sort of questions, that the sum of all of the probability mass functions is equal to one, okay? That's a sort of uh, an axiom of uh, probability. So in this case, this expression here will add up to one. Now sort of tricks of the trade like that always are useful in these sort of derivations, okay? So the sum of all of the probability, probability mass functions from x equals zero to infinity, the sum of that will equal to one. That's quite useful in simplifying things on an ongoing basis. Okay, so the mean is derived as follows. Okay, so if you had the expected value of x, and that is the sum of the probability mass functions times each individual uh, possible value of x, okay? That's just a sort of straightforward definition to start off with the expectation of a discrete random variable, okay? So, this is our summation here from x equals zero to infinity, and this is our probability mass function. x plus r minus one, choose r minus one, okay? Times p to the power of x, times one minus p to the power of r, times x, okay? Now, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna try and simplify things. So my support, as in each possible outcome of x, is 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up into infinity. What I'm going to do here is actually split this into two. So I'm going to treat 0 separately and have 1 to infinity as the other part of my partition. Okay, so I have 0 down here. And I have 1 to infinity here, okay? So I don't really do anything with the 1 to infinity part. I just actually change the range of the summation from x equals 0 to x equals 1. See that it's x equal to 0 here, and now it's x equal to 1 here, because I'm not including 0 in this range of summation. So this is the, uh, the expression for 0 there. Okay, but because it's a it's a it's a, a multiple of zero, so p to the power of zero, all that, this whole thing just cancels to zero. Okay, because we're multiplying something by zero. Okay, so that's how this zero ends up down here. Okay, so 
this expression here we just carry forward down to the next line okay and what I'm going to do here is expand out that binomial coefficient here this expression here I'm going to sort of try and evaluate this okay so I have x plus r minus 1 factorial over r minus 1 factorial times x factorial okay so that's my binomial coefficient there okay so that that's coming in here times the probability of x, uh, px p to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of r times x okay so far so good so what i'm going to do here is i'm trying to going to try and simplify out a few things okay so i have p i'm going to try and uh, so this is essentially a summation in x so what i'm going to try and do is take out some of my some of the values here so let's just look at this one here i have p to the x here okay so what i'm going to do is express that as p times x to the minus one times p okay and what else have i got oh yeah so i have r minus one factorial so I'm actually going to multiply above and below by this, this fraction here by r. So I have 1 over r minus 1 factorial equals r over r factorial. Okay. So this r, small r, will turn up here. So we have r and p out here. And now I have r factorial down here. Okay. Now what else have i got i have one minus p times to the power of r plus one okay so what where did that come from something similar to what i done there with r oops so one minus p to the power of r is one minus p to the power of r plus one over one minus p okay so that's how i this uh go from this expression here to this decomposing it into two parts one minus p to the power of r plus one times one minus p and that is it i think oh yeah sorry one more thing I have an expression here in x, okay, and I have x factorial there, okay. So x divided by x factorial is simply 1, let's just clear that out, that is 1 over x minus 1 factorial, okay. So, okay, there's a lot to unpack there, okay, that's why I took my time at this okay so if you just go through the video there you'll see quite quickly that i can go from this expression here to this expression here okay and so essentially what i've done here is i've isolated this expression at uh, in front of the summation r p divided by one minus p okay and i have a summation there for the rest of the the uh, that's summation there uh, for the rest of the the expression. Okay. Now, so what we're going to do is let s equal r plus one and w equals x minus one inside the summation. Okay. So what does that do? Okay. So essentially, s equals r plus one, which means r equals s minus 1 and x minus 1 equals w so essentially i'm just going to essentially transpose these expressions here okay so x plus r minus 1 becomes w plus s minus 1 factorial okay r factorial becomes s minus 1 factorial okay and x minus 1 factorial becomes w factorial 
okay? So P, we have PW there, and 1 minus P to the power of S there, okay? Now, essentially what that is, particularly this expression here, is a binomial coefficient of W plus S minus 1, choose S minus 1, this expression here, okay? Perfect. That is actually a, the sum of a probability mass function of a negative random binomial variable W, which is 1. So this entire expression here reduces to 1, okay? So what we're left with is R times P divided by 1 minus P. So that is the expected value of X, our negative uh, binomial random variable okay that's it so that's the ex expected value of x now just as a remark uh, this is something I'm going to carry forward for the next video is that if that is an ex this is a random variable in terms of but negative binomial random variable of in term denoted in terms of w as opposed to x the expected value will be sp times 1 minus p. So essentially, I'm going to use this expression again in the derivation of the variance. And this, using what we've done here now, that will be uh, the expected value of w will be sp divided by 1 minus p. So it's essentially, we're using our result here again in the next video. So just this, this expression is going to turn up. Okay, that's grand. So that's the derivation of the mean of the negative binomial random variable.